Hello, my friends. I mean you. Yes, you. Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi, and welcome back at the museum. Today's video is about DCC car stereos. In the past, we have shown you how we have created this beautiful display here at the museum, where we are able to showcase and hook up all the players that are in working condition. We are mostly complete. Theoretically, we're missing one player that we've only seen in the brochures and pictures, who so have never seen one live, but we keep a spot reserved anyway. We know that four are in existence for sure, it's the Panasonic and three Philips players. We have one fantasy piece that we've done a video about in the past. It's called the DC722, which started out as a regular analog cassette player, but was then later upgraded with the front replaced on a later model DCC822. So it has the internals of a DCC player, but the front is from a regular analog player. But since all the buttons are the same, you just get a really different look with the wood grain coloring on front. So what about the four other players? Let me tell you a little bit about them. It started late 1993. It took a little longer for Philips to release the car players because like you've seen in the interview with Gijs Ritz, it simply takes longer to develop anything that you're going to use in the car because of all the testing. So late 1993, they released three models, the 801, again, that we've only seen in pictures, the 811 and the 821. The difference between the 801 and 811 is the radio data system. The 801 didn't have that and the 811 did. All three players, including the 821, were based on cartridge system, so you would be able to take out the entire player for security reasons from the car. They were expensive, around 2,300 guilders or around $1,150 at that time, which was a lot of money and nearly $500 more than a regular CD player in car would cost. So it was challenging to get them sold. The difference, the top model between the 811 and the 821, which was their top model, was that the 821 was the only player at the time that would allow a CD changer hookup, which was another thousand dollars. So this could end up being a three thousand dollar car system if you wanted everything. And that didn't include amplifiers or speakers or whatever. But they are very well built. You don't see them a lot around because of the high price, but quality wise, they were built in a good way. Later in 1994, they came with the DCC 822 range. The 822 range contains of three players, all of them using the same DCC 822, a new player that wasn't based on the cartridge system, but a removable front with a new 12 character display. So you would be able to see the artist information, etc., etc perfectly on a display, uh, removable front, and in three versions, the A22, A24, which would contain the wired remote control and the DCC A22, and then they rebranded another version of that smart called the 850, which would include the player, the wired remote control, and a CD changer. Right between those releases, at the end of 93, early 94, Panasonic came with their only player, DCC player in car. And boy, did it make a difference, because I think it is the most beautiful one. Because it has a motorized tray, and because to save space of the motorized tray, it doesn't contain an amplifier, so it's the only player that you would really have to hook up to an amplifier. It's also the only player that has a wireless remote control and it also has a 12 character display. So this is features wise, a very modern, sleek looking player in my opinion. So after that, they didn't release any more uh, models. Interesting also about these models is that you can see how the community comes together. All of these players, except for the A21, are donated to the museum. We've 
did some quick service, you know, cleaning and the only thing they really need is replacement of the belts, potentially pinch rollers. The DC one was donated by Curtis Barr. We've done a previous video about that. We've also done a video about the donation of the DC 722 Fantasy Please donated by Tom Nines. The 811 was donated by Niels von Nordegraaf. The 822 was donated by Jan Simonsma, who used it in his car. The 824, the combination with the remote control, was donated by Jacques Houtsmit, also used in his car. And the 850 was donated by Hannes Sanders. So here you have it, a little bit of background information. We know most of the pricing and marketing information from Gerald Derrickson, who was an account manager at Philips during that period. He still had all the brochures and all the sales documentation. And he was also able to let us acquire his acrylic case. The acrylic case contains a A21 and that's how he would sample case it from store to store. It's like a little case and now here at the museum as well. So we hope you enjoyed this video, see you next time.